we're going to read uh, starting in verse 22 of Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 11. Book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Father, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you for these precious moments that you've given us. We thank you for the atmosphere that's primed for the teaching and preaching of your word. Father, you have given me the ability to speak. Now, anoint their ears that they may hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in advance for the outcome of such a wonderful, wonderful service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen and amen go ahead and take your seats in the presence of the lord uh, last week i was in i was in mableton georgia at our georgia location and uh susan washington started to share i just went i said i'm not preaching i'm taking a little time in the middle of the week off uh everybody needs a break it doesn't matter how powerful you may be you better take a break because your body can only do so much so I took a break for those two weeks and didn't do anything on a, on a Wednesday or, or a Thursday uh, for about two weeks. And I'll take a little bit more time a little bit later in this year. Uh, but as she was ministering, she went across these verses of scripture. And for me, I, I'm listening and I'm hearing and I'm taking notes, regardless of who's up, if they're uh, ministering the word of God, I'm always taking notes. I can hear from God through anybody uh, as long as it's the word of God or truth. Um, so as she was ministering, I, I, I caught a few things and I'm going to dig in a little bit tonight. It's not exactly what he, she said, but it's what I call anytime I'm around anyone and they're, uh, like I said, if they're ministering or whatever they're doing, I hear what they say, but then I hear what God says behind it. So I always listen well because I want to grow. And if you want to grow, you have to listen. A perfect sign that you're not growing you had to have an inability to listen so if you can't listen you can't grow uh, my title tonight and we'll get into uh, another part of this verse of scripture as well uh, let go of unforgiveness and believe let go of unforgiveness and believe let go of unforgiveness and believe let's drop down before i go into my point one let's drop down and read uh, verse 25 and verse 26 verse 25 and verse 26 mark chapter 11 verse 25 and verse 26 and what and listen to this verse 25 and whenever you stand praying if you have anything against anyone forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you for your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, I want to roll back into the first few scriptures that I read. And I want to give you point one because this was so powerful as I heard it. As I'm sitting here and I'm hearing as she read over Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24, I was listening and point number one came up. The belief system of God's people can change anything. The belief system of God's people can change anything. Now, I, I don't want you to skip over this. Because see, some people need to slow down. Some people go too fast and you got all that meat on the bone. So I'm gonna read um, 22 through 24 again. And I want you to listen as I'm reading Mark 11, 22 through 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. Now see, you, you, many of y'all read right over. Whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart 
but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm going back. I'm going back to verse 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, this mountain, stone mountain, whoever says to this mountain, not a headache, this mountain. See, you're not, it's, it's still not registering with you. He said, this mountain, a mountain, you t I gave you the ability to speak to a mountain. See, now it's hard to believe because you're not a believer. He says, I'm going to push it to where it seems impossible. And I want you to talk to something that seems impossible to move. You struggling with talking to death. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I'm going to linger. Whoever says to this mountain, if you go to the end of this parking lot, look back at this building. This is a Q's building. Imagine this building being in the way of where God wants to take you. And you standing at the end of the parking lot speaking to the building in belief and telling the building move. See, this is not registering because you're carnal. Okay, stay with me, stay with me. When she read that, I saw a mountain. When she said that, I saw myself standing in front of a mountain. I saw myself with faith speaking to the mountain. Number one again, the belief system of God's people can change anything. If he said, Jesus said, we can speak to a mountain and the mountain obey us. If the mountain will obey us, the God's folks, you may not be God's folks, God's people can speak to a mountain and the mountain obeys God's people. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me, let me tell you why mountains don't obey you because you're in unforgiveness. The weakness of God's people is unforgiveness. You've been talking, you've been shouting, you've been running, you've been giving, but you're still in unforgiveness. The reason small things don't even obey you is because of unforgiveness. That's why it goes into what you're capable of and then it goes into the verses that will dilute your faith and your belief system. Right now, while you have your faith project, you also have someone you're holding in unforgiveness. And you're wondering why it's not working. He said, if you have anything against anyone and we're still trying to do major faith projects hating on somebody, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you think. It is not going to work while you're holding that in your heart. It breaks down the ability to believe for the power that God has available for the believer. You say you believe, why won't you release them? If you believe, you will release them. If, if, if you <laughs> see y'all don't want to talk about this but you want to run and turn flips and ain't nothing gonna change you 
can run laps as long as you want to. You can sing as loud as you want to. Ain't nothing going to change until you forgive. There's such, such power in the body of Christ that's not being used because they can't forgive. Look, look at me. Don't be on my stage and ain't going to look up when I'm talking. No, no, we ain't playing them kind of games. Because we're going to get this straight. Because if you can't move a mountain, you can shut down my platform. And you ain't about to do that. talking about it doesn't work it works you just don't have the ability to forgive it, it the power of God works but if you got a bunch of people I don't care if a thousand or ten thousand in unforgiveness I don't care how much they talk nothing's gonna change I don't care what they done you got to forgive them so you can speak to the mountain the only reason you don't have power over the mountain is you cannot release them and until you release them the mountain is not going to even shake I'm going to take it a step further. If you think you're forgiven and you have not forgiven them, the Bible says you are not forgiven. No wonder your prayers ain't working. The belief system of God's people can move a mountain. The reason you're not seeing it is because they got hostility in their heart against somebody and it neutralizes their ability to have mountain moving faith. Let go of unforgiveness and believe you are a liar. It does work. You just won't let go of you won't let go of those people that hurt you then and hurt you now and will hurt you in the, in the future. But you gotta let them go so that when you start talking to mountains, mountains move. They are not going to move as long as you're in unforgiveness. Because when you're un in unforgiveness, you're still in your sins. So what you done yesterday and what you done a year ago and what you done two years ago and what you doing right now, you're still being judged forward okay all right okay you got all these religions that's why you're in religion because you can't forget you can't have a true relationship with Jesus Christ and be in unforgiveness I didn't mean to get preachy on you, but y'all start acting funny. And I don't do funny. People's lives are on the line. I ain't playing them religious games. You ain't gonna forgive anybody. Sit down until you can process it. So you, you have all this power that's not being used because you still got an itch you can't scratch all this heavenly power available for the church and you're trying to convince everybody there is no power because you don't have the ability to forgive let, let me help you let me help you let me i'm gonna help you i'm gonna help you okay before any faith project, you have to forgive. Those of you who have faith projects and unforgiveness, you're wasting your time. And that's what the devil wants you to do because you become an atheist. And now you're teaching other people that this stuff doesn't work. It doesn't work for someone who's holding bitterness and resentment against his brother and his sisters. Why are so many Christians dying of cancer? Because they're bitter. I, I've been around some really good teaching and some really credible people. 
And before they pray the prayer of healing over a person, they lead them in a prayer of forgiveness towards whomever they may have an art against. It doesn't matter. You can pour a whole gallon of oil on them. If they don't forgive whomever they're holding that against, your prayers are in vain. Sickness is eating up the body of Christ because they don't know how to release. How are you going to get a blessing from God when you're punishing somebody that God created? Y'all always want a blessing, but who are you punishing? Who are, who are you retaliating on? Well, I'm not retaliating against anybody. Well, you turned and went the other way when you saw them coming. That's retaliation. You rolled your eyes. That's retaliation. You rolled your neck. That's retaliation. Who does she think she is? You retaliated. I didn't throw anything at them. You didn't have to. You got enough emotional stuff going on right now and enough of resistance that you will never get a blessing. I don't care how old you are. He talks, Jesus talks about how powerful we can be. And then in the next few verses, he shows us what cancels out our power. You can never get over a flesh struggle when you got somebody you're hating. You can never get over an addiction while you're hating on someone. You're dealing with a small devil, but you have envy and strife in your hearts and unforgiveness. And that devil will stay with you all your life and transfer to the next generation until you choose to forgive. I was thinking at home, this is going to be smooth on this first one because I was going to talk about the power first. And then I was going to talk about the unforgiveness. But see, you get resistance when somebody, because see, you, you, that, that devil of unforgiveness knew where I was going even if you didn't. So he starts to create resistance. The worst thing you can do, I'm sorry, I ain't staying in Christianity all my life. It ain't nothing happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> y'all can come sit in here every Wednesday night if y'all want to. But if nothing's happening, I'm going to drop my mic and I'm out because I'm not going to do anything religious. I got to get results. Jesus got results. The disciples got results. I'm going to get results. Stay with me. So there's so much mountain moving power available, but so much unforgiveness in the church. Years ago, I heard, uh, and I didn't read years ago, I heard, they said, um, hell is going to be filled with church people who couldn't forgive. Number two, an unforgiving heart weakens the mountain moving faith. I've been saying that. An unforgiving heart weakens mountain moving faith. An unforgiving heart weakens mountain moving faith. I guarantee you for everything that you plan to do, there's always somebody that comes to rub you wrong just before you do it. It's a strategy. Every time you get ready to do something, some joker close to you starts ruffling your feathers, getting you all upset. You were all excited and then they got in the surroundings. And what it is, it's a strategic plan of the enemy to stir up unforgiveness so that your faith project doesn't work. It's a plan from hell. Once I realized that, I said, you're not going to move me off my faith and I don't care what 
what you do to me, I'm still going to forgive you and I'm going to enjoy my good life because I'm not going to let what you done stop me from getting what God said I'm supposed to have. I understand now how Satan works. He gets some uneducated, ignorant person to come and do me wrong while I'm doing everybody right, thinking it's going to turn my faith into anger. But I said, hell no. I am going to continue to forgive and release and it doesn't matter. You can call me a fool if you want to. I ain't begging nobody for anything. I ain't got to ask nobody for anything. I don't wonder if I can pay my bills. I don't wonder if we can pay for this shirt. I don't wonder at all. You, you listen, when you get a mortgage, you got too much mortgage to be un in unforgiveness. I'm going to say that again. You got too much mortgage to be in unforgiveness. You crazy. You should have done it when you were in the project. But when you get a mortgage on a house or mortgage on land, you ain't got no time to be in unforgiveness because the same thing that came to you will lead you through unforgiveness. You're going to worry about what they say. They didn't put me in. They can't take me out. See, this is good teaching because based on what I'm teaching, that tells me that God's about to release something and you got to have enough self-discipline that when things start getting rocky, you don't go along with it. <laughs> Listen, I've been living 50 three years stuff happens stuff happens but I'm in control of my own life I'm in control of my own mind I'm in control of my own emotions nobody's gonna rub me wrong to where I cancel out what God wants to do for me I ain't afraid of no devil you understand what I'm saying none at all why because I'm not in unforgiveness as long as I am not in unforgiveness, Satan has no legal rights to me. Demons have no legal rights to me. Those boys with the posse can't do nothing about what I do. So, so the ability to move mountains is in us. It's in us, Sasha. The, the ability to move mountains is in us. So the plan of the adversary we got to stop all this power so let book and them come in and misuse us we say that we released them but every time we see them we start feeling funny now we're wondering why everything came to a screeching halt because god couldn't go any further than your unforgiveness God will not go any further than your unforgiveness. Imagine giving you power to retaliate. <laughs> let, let, me, let me help y'all. Y'all don't know how powerful I am. I'm powerful enough to snatch up the little jokers that's working against me in this church. I'm, I'm powerful. I, I know who they are. I'm powerful enough to do that. But why don't I do it? Because they help me to keep a heart check. So let them idiots stay around. So it's proof that my heart is still a good heart. See, you want the devils to go. No, let them stay and don't give them any attention. The reason you hadn't seen me do what I could do is because my heart is right, meaning they have time and space for repentance. Okay. Because when your heart's right, you give space like God will give space. I know, I know this place. I know this place better than you know your house.
God allowed them to get there to show you what's in you. You said, run them all the way. No, show me what's in me. Show me what I'm capable of. Test me while I'm on this level because if I get much more power and my heart's not right, I can do some major damage to your kingdom. Only, only reason you ain't kill nobody because you ain't got enough power to kill them. Joseph, at a certain point in his life, he had the power to have his brothers kill. And it tells me his heart was right because when he got the power, he fed them and didn't kill them. Oh, he had the power. He had the power over all Egypt. But he forgave them. He forgave them so much that what he was over was sustained. You want to know what sustained Egypt? Joseph's ability to forgive his brothers. You can never sink what has the ability to forgive. You wonder, can they take you down? No. There's no way they can take you down. And you keep releasing. I didn't say go to lunch with them. I didn't say give them a ride in your car. I said release them. Everything that you release, it causes you to be elevated. Let me tell you what's holding you down. The weights of unforgiveness. Oh, Jesus. I was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on some things, uh, especially with the, the murders that have taken place. And you've heard my initiative, feel the pain before it becomes personal. What that means is, uh, do something before it becomes your family member. So we're doing that initiative. I was at the radio station this morning to do a little uh, recording this morning. And while I was there this morning, I ran into this couple and I've never seen them before in my life. And uh, I greeted the husband. I went in the back, came back out. And then the wife came over and I greeted the wife. And they asked me, what are you here for? I said, well, I am doing an initiative uh, because of all the uh, homicides that are going on and I wanna help. So she listened to me and she said, well, uh, most of those who are, are injured by gun violence uh, and live, I, I am the one that has to deal with them at university. I mean, not UAB. And uh, she said, I see them in that critical state. And she said, it's a long, uh, term experience to, to go from being shot to, back to health. I said, uh, I said, I can use you. She said, whatever I can do uh, to help, let me know. And uh, I said, well, let's exchange numbers. So we exchanged numbers. She started texting before I could get back home. And, and what that tells me, is I have the right initiative because God's sending me the help before I even get it off the ground. You understand what I'm saying? It don't matter if you don't help me because you're jealous of me. <laughs> I don't even know this lady. But she said, she said, I, I, want, I want to help. I said, well, what I'm gonna do, I texted her back and I said, I'm gonna have someone to call you tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm gonna have someone to call her. She is the assistant professor in Birmingham at UAB. I don't know, who, I didn't know who she was. All I know is she recognized something about me and started asking me questions. And 
I started giving her answers. Listen, if I was bitter, I wouldn't have been at that radio station because I was tired and I didn't feel like going. And, and listen, I was talking me out of it. I text Benny Mac last night to see if he would let me out. I told my wife, I don't feel like going. I got up this morning, I didn't feel like going. But something in me was not blocked because I'm not in unforgiveness. I got up, drove across town, got there. It wasn't about the recording. It was about the meeting with that lady and her husband this morning. See, unforgiveness makes you miss your appointments. You may have a God-sent vision and purpose, but there are people that God has in line to help you. But if you're in unforgiveness, you miss your signals. Okay, 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 all right, okay. That's free for everybody that needs to know that. Okay. So an unforgiving heart weakens the mountain moving faith. There's no way to be filled with faith and filled with unforgiveness at the same time. Unforgiveness, it eats away at your ability to believe. Because whatever you're trying to believe for, while you're trying to punish them, there's something about trying to punish them that makes you think that you should be punished too. You can't believe in punishing them without believing that your sins are not forgiven. So it's something in the inner workings of you when you're trying to make someone pay for what they done. Something registers on the inside of you and says, I have to pay for what I've done as well. So there's a conscious and a subconscious mind. And the Bible says in the book of James, uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man believe that he will receive anything from the Lord. So one side of my mind is saying, I believe and God's going to do it. The other side of my mind is saying, I wish you would come down my way again. I wish you would sit in the section. I wish you would say something else to me. So one side of your mind is saying, I'm believing for my money. The other side of your mind, because you want to retaliate, is saying, no, 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 we ain't believing for anything. We're going to punish her. But it can't. you can't think about punishing her without thinking about you being punished as well. So one side of your mind is saying, I'm going to be blessed. The other side of your mind is saying, I'm going, I'm going to pay for what I just done. My, my mind is stable. My mind is one. You understand? My mind is one. Lady David said, tell you, I'm always focused. Because my mind is one. The Bible says that your double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man believe that he will receive anything from the Lord. Well, I need a whole lot from the Lord. So I'm not going to let my subconscious mind and my conscious mind go to battle. I have one mind. I mean, I got one direction. I mean, you ain't never seen me go in two directions. My family never seen me go into two directions. Okay, all right. So y'all, y'all still here? Let me get. Can I give y'all some examples? Let me tell you how to handle strife and unforgiveness. Let me, can I tell you how to handle? It? We got models in the Bible, okay? And you got a model on this platform. You couldn't imagine what I've gone through. When I talk about what I've gone through, people think about Georgia. No, it wasn't Georgia. It was here. It doesn't bother you what short-term relationships do to you. What bothers you is when long-term relationships go south. I've been pastoring this church too long for you to be acting like that. All right. So I, it, no, there's no problem to forgive them. The problem comes when you, you have to forgive the sons that you snatched out of hell. 
fed them, gave wisdom to them, and then married them to your daughters. Okay. That's why you got to know your Bible. <laughs> you got to know your Bible. Uh, let's turn to the book of Luke uh, chapter 23. Because I could easily say, you got me out of my bed. I'm up praying half the night for your situation. And then you're going to walk around like, like you don't even know me. But I said, I got too many projects going on to let you cancel me out. I got a project that, that's about to start. And when I was telling you about Kira, I said it was $300,000. No, it's $522,000. A project that's about to start. I can't be messing around with folks getting angry when I got that kind of project about to start up. You may have a $100 project. You ain't got time to be messing around in unforgiveness with a, a $100 project. Let me, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you what unforgiveness would do. Unforgiveness would cause me to have to raise $522,000. But because unforgiveness was not there, I'm just going to wait on them to get it done. I don't have to raise a dime. They send in the checks to take care of it. See, you lock yourself in. See, when everything was going on, I got to stay cool. Come on, Steve, stay cool. I wasn't praying every day just because I love God. I was praying every day so I don't go off on nobody. I don't need to go off on anybody, not right now. Not right now. I got too much riding on this thing. I, I can't. To be, to be honest with you, it was a, in, in all the projects I've been dealing with, it's been a $1.7 million projects I've been dealing with over the past few months. One's already sealed because I kept my cool. Now the one that's, uh, that's not as much, we're going to close that one. I ain't about to let you make me mad now. You think I'm going to let you make me mad when I'm about to get all this land? I'm going to let you with your ignorant self get under my skin. Not now. Not ever. Because when you learn how this thing works, you just said, oh, they're just having their day. They're just having their day. When they're done with their day, they're going to come around like ain't nothing happened. So you got to treat them like ain't nothing happened. You ever been around people that just seem like they've done everything they could to destroy you, and then they come back the next week acting like, hey, you want to go out to lunch? <laughs> but everything, it's, it's, a, it's a test. It's the plan of Satan. See, you got to learn this stuff. I got about eight minutes. You got to learn this stuff because if you don't know this stuff, the very thing that you thought was an enemy, that thing was making you, it was preparing you for where you were going. And some of y'all don't understand because y'all won't listen long enough. I am not going to allow something because of my emotions to deplete me when I got so many people around me that want me to fail. There are people who want you to fail. If you get in unforgiveness, you will fail. Luke 23. Jesus, this is good. <laughs> y'all don't know what y'all about to walk up out of here and do. You just don't know what you about to release with your mouth. Luke 23, verse 34. Luke 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garment and cast lots. 
They snatched his clothes off of him and then gambled for it. It wasn't enough to put him on the cross. We're going to humiliate you more. We're going to take your robe and we're going to cast lots for it and see who wins the bet. And we're going to take home your clothes. That's why the Bible teaches us he was, he was crucified naked. They gambled for his clothes. Look at the prayer he's praying while he sees them down there gambling over his clothes. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Yeah, they're talking. They don't know what they're doing. embodying Jesus Christ until he is seen in the way we love, live, and lead. You think that's you walking around smiling at everybody. No, it's when you're hanging on the cross and it's the worst day of your life and you're still thinking about their future more than yours. Man, I just said all around the world, all the projects that I was working on, but all of them are sealed now. <laughs> and guess what? I didn't have to come and ask for no special offering. Guess what? In 23 years, I never had to ask for a special offering. And guess what? I'm not going to ask for a special offering because I'm going to keep on forgiving. All right. Now, now that was Jesus. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. And I know you're saying in your mind, but that's Jesus. Well, let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 7. Let's go to the book of Acts. Man, y'all y'all don't know how powerful y'all are, do you? No, y'all don't know how powerful you are. I didn't realize how powerful I was until I started forgiving, folks. You say, well, well, you don't ever seem like you're distracted. Well, I, I just didn't let them get on my nerves. I got to be focused. I'm, I'm a driver. I'm a leader. I got to be focused. I don't know. What, I got to know what I'm talking about. If I wreck, I wreck a whole lot of folks. So I'm not going to be blinded by unforgiveness when I got all these people who believe in me. And they ain't just in Birmingham. They all around the world now. Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, verse 59, Acts chapter 7. Thank you, Susan. That was a great word last Thursday night. She probably think, I don't know where you got all that from. Well, I got it. You sowed a seed and I reaped a harvest. Acts chapter 7, verse 59. And they stoned Stephen. Oh, same name. As he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus receive my spirit then he kneeled down and cried out with a loud voice lord do not charge them with this sin and when he had said this he fell asleep they having a rock party they're stoning him while they're stoning him he says to the lord do not lay this to their charge. Don't punish them for what they're doing to me. Now, I believe he embodied Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> he's doing the same thing that Jesus done. See, you run with too many people say, you need to get them. You need to take them out. You need to sabotage them. You need to do something. You're hanging with demons that are canceling out your belief system. That's weakening your faith, not just in that area, every area. Jesus said it. Stephen said it. Stephen means crown one. See, when you forgive, they can't take your crown. 
When you forgive, they can't take your crown. They want to know how you grow a church. Forgive. Because you're going to get hurt a whole lot when you get more than two people. You got to forgive them for all the promises they made, just like Peter did. You got to forgive them that ate a meal with you, dipped with you, and then went out and betrayed you. You got to forgive him too. You know, you had the Peter situation, and then you had the Judas situation, and Jesus needed to get back up. And you can't hold that stuff and get up. My point number three, put point, point number three up. I'm trying to show you what God is taking you. The ability to forgive will transition the believer into a glorious life. The ability, you know what? They got stirred up in their wickedness to transition you because you can't get there without Judas. See, y'all want to go to a great place without betrayal. It doesn't work like that. It took a betrayal to shift Jesus into the hands of the enemy. So after he shifted into the hands of the enemy, now they begin their process of crucifying him. They didn't know who he was. Judas said, the one that I kiss is the one. Jesus turned around and said, you, be, you betrayed me with a kiss? So you gonna turn me over to a world or to the world with a kiss? Jesus remembered the kiss, but he didn't remember the sin. But for him to move into the glorified place, it took that. You mean I had you at my house? I had you around my children? And then you done that to me? You transitioned me. I don't know what, I don't know what's going on in the spirit, but I was in my office, Sasha. I don't know. I, I don't I'm, I, I'm walking around my office. I always do that. I'm praying. I'm anointing myself before I come out here. I stop in front of the map that's on my wall. That map's been in there on that wall for years. I stop and I start looking at the map. And the Lord told me, I'm about to send you to every country that you have favor with. Now this, I have that map. That map's been in my that map's been in my office for years. It's framed in my office. It's been there for years. It's been there for years. I have a library in my office. I have books everywhere. All of a sudden, I'm walking by, and every title of every book start to jump out at me. I take books. I start to bring some of them out here, but it was too many. He said, I am bringing you into a season where you're going to start reading from this material. And every book I pulled from the shelf was on leadership. One of them was by John Maxwell and said, it said, how high are you going to climb? It said, how high are you going to be climb, going to climb? You have wasted your pain. You're crying about what they done to you and didn't figure out what promotion was in line for you. In order for Jesus to get to his glorified body, he had to be betrayed. He had to be nailed to a cross. He had to be put in a tomb. See, your problem is you don't want to go through anything. And you want everybody to be your buddy and your friend. And you want everybody to like you and say what you want to hear. Well, that means you're not going anywhere. But if you know you're called to be more than what you are right now, and you need to prepare yourself to forgive everybody that does crazy stuff against you, whether they meant it or it was something that was done by mistake. A lot of things are done out of ignorance. <laughs> I said a lot of things are done out of ignorance. 
So when you teach them correctly, they'll come and they'll repent for what they've done. Some things, they're just a downright enemy. That even if you teach them right, they're still going to continue to go in the direction that they go. But that's okay. All they're doing is promoting you. All they're doing is pushing you to a place you never would have gone without their hand. <laughs> you never would have gone without their hand. You need to start saying thank you for helping me to my next dimension. Help, thank you for helping me to transfer into another dimension of wisdom. I would know what I know if I didn't have a demon like you around me. almost done. I'm four minutes past the time I wanted to go. Uh, in Penson, it was about the second year, second year of pastoral ministry. We were having Monday night prayer. We used to always have Monday night prayer. We made it easier for y'all. We come on Wednesdays and pray. And uh, you now those who want to get up on Tuesdays, so we just started that. Um, and one of those nights, I felt like I was being crucified. I don't know what being crucified feels like, but I felt like I was being crucified. This is the second year of my pastoral ministry. And I'm thinking, God, what meaneth this? Because I, I knew I was a good guy. I knew I cared about everybody. I knew I wanted to help everybody. I, I knew that. And I'm asking God, what does this mean? He never said anything. In the last three years, I know what it is to be good and be crucified. I didn't know what it meant 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I didn't have a clue of what it meant. I didn't have a clue. Three years ago, I got a revelation. Just three years ago, it may take 20 years for you to understand why certain things happen. But when you get a revelation of what's happening, it won't hurt anymore. It won't hurt anymore. It won't hurt anymore. I came to tell you, those of you who get a revelation to tonight, the pain is leaving you right now. The pain and the suffering is leaving you right now. You want to know why it's leaving you? Because you're forgiving anyone and everyone that helped to promote you. Because all they done was push you up. If you released them and you forgave them, they push you up. There's a revelation I have now I never thought I could have. But the stuff I went through just pushed me. Sunday evening we we're, we're at uh, another prayer visual and uh, they invite me to come up to pray and uh, I walk up and I get the mic when I get the mic I start to pray and as soon as I start to pray it was like the wind started blowing and the atmosphere started shifting while I was praying I didn't pray loud I don't have to scream I have authority now because I forgave the more you forgive, the more authority that comes in the atmosphere. You can't stop anything up in here, not when my mic, when I'm not when I'm on the mic. And anybody that's connected to what I do, when they open up their mouth in this atmosphere, ain't nothing no witch can do at all. You can be a religious hater, but ain't nothing you can stop when we open up our mouths because we chose to forgive instead of showing hostility toward people we know we're trying to harm. been talking stuff that seems crazy to my natural mind but I said God if you're gonna talk like that 
I'm going to believe like that. I am going to adjust my belief system to what you're saying. I refuse, and this is what you don't understand, I refuse to suffer and not reign. Your problem is that you made adjustments to keep on suffering. While I was suffering, I was planning for reigning while I was suffering. Will I suffer more? I'm pretty sure I will because I have not reached the destination that God has for me. But I see it differently. I get sharper when they put the blade on me. You ain't seen half of what God's gonna do with me. You ain't seen half of what God's gonna do with Refresh Family Church. If I was you and I thought I was gonna be a deacon, I'd learn the word. Cause ain't nobody got no business being no deacon that don't love the word of God. And we're not gonna anoint nobody no deacon that doesn't love the word of God. Cause if you don't have the word a love for the word to restrain you, then God's going to wind up killing you for t stepping over into areas you shouldn't step over into. Okay. Oh. What is it that he wants to do with you that you focus on your trauma more than your triumph? Pastors, I wish I could tell you that the devil wasn't going to attack your marriages. But you never go to where you're supposed to go if he doesn't. <laughs> Let me help you. Whenever the devil, as a man, whenever the devil attacks your marriage, you become the Lord. Meaning you bring repair. To your spouse. So I don't care how jacked up she may be. You're Lord now. You're responsible for that property. You're responsible. See it elevates you. That's the key. If you know anything about the landlord. If anything breaks. The landlord is responsible for fixing it. And he said, he's king of kings and lord of lords. So when trouble came, I became a lord and a king. So therefore, any problems in my house, it is my responsibility. That's my jurisdiction. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> I am going to fix it. It ain't up to her. I am going to fix it. Which meant I had to go to another dimension in my belief system and in truth to fix creation. You're talking about the government cannot fix creation. Only the DNA of heaven can fix creation. Natalie, I'm sorry if I ain't what y'all grew up with. I went through so much hell, I changed. I'm not the Steve or the Steven that was experienced years ago. Because when you go through enough trauma and forgive, you're not like where you came from. Let me close with this. I'm more like where I'm going than I'm like where I've been. I don't do 
what I used to do. Because I'm getting ready for where I'm going. I already know what it's like where I've been. I know that world. It's just this one ahead of me. That's calling me. Every time I release somebody, it calls me. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on, think a little bit different. Come on up, come, come on up, come on, come on up. And when they still swinging at you, you're too high for them to hit you. Come on up, come on up. Unforgiveness keeps you way down. Come on up, come on up. You got some friends in high places. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on up. The reason that relationship ain't working cause it's over. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You looking for folks. No, when you come up, they're looking for you. Come on up. You're trying to chase a blessing. When you come up, the blessings of the Lord will chase you down and overtake you. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. I didn't ask could I go on the radio. They asked me to come on the radio. Come on up. Come on up. Erica, it may be some stuff in between. If you keep coming up, girl, they won't be able to stop you because you haven't gone as high as you're going. So just keep coming on up. The adversity is a sign that you're lifting off the ground. The pressure is a sign that you're lifting off of the ground. Just forgive everything that was down low and keep coming on up. I've made up my mind. I'm not going to let anything stop me now. I'm not going to let my blood pressure get high. I'm not going to let anxiety take over. I'm just going to keep coming on up. And if this word has been for you tonight, and I know it has, I dare you to just start giving God the best praise you can give him. I feel something in this house. I feel an elevation in this house.